thanks for coming and especially because there are like too many talks at the same time that are super awesome. Uh, so I really appreciate that you are here. Uh, I would like to, to talk a little bit about uh, the past, the present, and the future of storyboarding, especially in Blender. But first things first, well, first things first, I would like to show you my t-shirt. Uh, and who am I? So my name is Renato Roldan. Uh, I'm a storyboard artist, animator, director, uh, concept artist. I have been working for more than 20 years already. Uh, I have worked at King as an art director, as a concept artist in Bandai Namco. Uh, then I moved into animation. I started as an animator and then I moved into video games and now I moved back to animation. Uh, so I have worked for the third floor as a storyboard artist. Uh, I am allowed now. Today, just they allow me to say that I work for Star Wars uh, Outlaws as a storyboard artist. Um, <laughs> uh, also, I have worked for, for Titmouse uh, in a project that I cannot uh, say yet, but you will know sooner. And probably after my talk, you will see some stuff that is mine, and then you will see something somewhere. And you would say, that looks a lot like what Renato has been doing. And that, yeah, that's, me, that's mine. Um, and also with Terraform Studios, working also in, 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 in several projects. But you will probably know me for this. So I'm, I'm the TIE Fighter guy. I'm the guy that loves Star Wars and, and takes Blender and start doing all this crazy stuff uh, on his own, on his free time. Um, so I like NPR a lot. I have been doing it for already almost 20 years. My, my first short, short movie uh, back in 2020, 20, no, sorry, in 20, 2003 um, uh, was NPR uh, without knowing what NPR was because I, I like to draw. But I thought that I was not going to be as good to be a 2D animator, so I made 3D look like 2D. And I keep on doing. I, I ended up doing also 2D animation after lots of years of training. Um, but one thing that I am doing right now is a short movie called The Last Pitfire. And I'm going to show you the, the proof of concept of, of the teaser, of the short movie. So as you can see, I, I like to do things fly a lot. Um, so what I'm going to try to, to explain here is, is a little bit what is storyboarding and, and where we started and where we are now, what I try to, to bring to the companies that I work for, and what is storyboarding? So it's supposed to be, and the legend says that the first one to do storyboarding was Walt Disney. Uh, they had a short movie called The Three Little Pigs, and he wanted a way to visualize the whole story and to be able to iterate and to be able to move things and, and to um, have the narrative 
narrative clear uh, at, a, at a first glance. So they create this, they create a story on a board and that's it, that, that's storyboarding. Um, you can find lots of images of Walt Disney with their storyboard for Pinocchio and, and um, Snow White. So they started doing this stuff. They started doing a, b a huge board with information that transformed the, the script into something visual. Uh, here are some of the examples of, of, for me, one of the greatest storyboards ever. Two of them are from Arcane. I needed to put two images of them. Um, and the other one is from Prince, Prince of Egypt, that for me is one of the most mind-blowing animated movies ever. And since the beginning, uh, storyboard was a craft of pen and paper. And, and if you are able to get one of the books from Miyazaki's storyboards, they are masterpieces in storyboard, storytelling, and, and narrative and craftsmanship. You can see how he thinks and how he makes the, the, the layout inside of, of that storyboard. But paper, where are we going? We don't need paper. And as I said, my hands are tied. I cannot show you anything that I have been working for the last two years uh, because of NDAs. So I'm going to try to explain you through the other work I do, that is the, the short movie, uh, everything that I have tried to apply to to the companies because mostly or, or, or the most uh, common thing is when I'm hired as a storyboard artist, they just think I'm going to draw and, and that's it. That That's my job. I get the script, I do a storyboard, a, a beautiful drawing and, and that's it. But I think from from my part as a storyboard artist, I like to get involved and I like to give more options to, to the company. So I always try to say, have you tried Blender for storyboarding? Because they usually give you like Storyboard Pro or whatever. Um, and they usually said, what, Blender? But, but that's a 3D software. Uh, yeah, well, you can do more stuff than, than just 3D. So we will start from the past of storyboarding in Blender. Ouch. So, okay. Where's the... So I have prepared some shots um, from, from my short. And that's the past. The past was just grease pencil. You, you had your your 2D uh, scene, you, you have your, your layers, and you can animate like if it was 2D. I can just add more frames. And the good thing about uh, storyboarding in Blender is that you have lots, all the, the options that you, can, that you could do inside Blender as a 3D software, but in 2D. So in this case, we will be a little bit um, uh, not too high end. So it will be just like drawing again. We will have a mouse. So this part it will come uh, later when I'm talking about the the future of of storyboarding and what I have what I have just done to grab the mouse to do something really uh, simple as assuming um, is something that that for me is really the key of of everything because. When you are attached to one tool, you have to figure out how to break the the rules or to break the constraints that that tool have. 
And the good thing about Blender is that you have lots of tools available. And in the future, you will have even more tools available. Um, so in this case, just adding a little bit more of movement to the character. She's looking to one side. You have everything available from um, grease pencil. So you have the onion skinning. And that will be it. So we have this. And we have the fill. And we can just duplicate this. Because at the end, it's just like a minor tweak on the color just to fill this gap. And that will be it. Uh, I can clean a little bit this to not have those whites. Those whites. But at the end, it's just like having something really easy that that gives you the feeling of movement. The the oh, wrong keyframe. Yeah, that happens a lot. So this is what what was the past, what was like several years ago, and and basically what most of, or or most of the people that that will hire me or that will hire you as a storyboard artist will expect. So you will draw one drawing, then another drawing, and that's it. That that's storyboarding. But that's not storyboarding. That's the past of storyboarding. And now we have the present of storyboarding, what I would like to call story blendering that nobody else is calling. Um, and in story blendering, uh, you take everything that you can do in Blender and you bring it to the production. And my experience is that most of the people freak out because they don't know you can do that. And and even more, apart from freaking out, they are, they are impressed on how easy you can do stuff, how fast you can do stuff, how much uh, tools you have to go further. And, and it's, it's a, I will show you more. So we can have here. And Option two. Okay, so we start as a 2D image. Everything is 2D, everything's flat, everything is uh, in the same level of depth. So you just draw one drawing after the other. And then you go to the third dimension and you start putting things in parallax and you can play with that. So you can have something like this. And that seems like a normal 2D image. But if you, you break everything, but you have some depth and, and you have some parallax. So you can play around with this and you can, for example, move. I have this separated and you can move the elements. You can make this move. And you can animate the camera too. And everything will have that small parallax. And this is just like 2D planes. Uh, everything is 2D. They are like just grease pencil objects. Um, but everything has that depth and everything goes to that third dimension. And when you show this to, to some producers, it's like, oh, wow, depth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, but this gives you a, a, a very great tool because you can do more stuff with, with less effort and you can, instead of having to draw everything, you can just create several layers of strokes and then move that strokes and you have the movement of that strokes. Um, that I have a, a, another example later and it's really easy and really um, enjoyable to start thinking outside of that 2D world. And if we would like to, to put anything else, it's just like creating a, like a new stroke. I like to start with a stroke um, because they gave me a little bit of depth already and I can just like place it. where it should be, so my planes are here, and I'm going to place it above the planes. I try not to be like super, maybe it's my fault and, and I should not do that, but I try not to be like super exhaustive on how I make things and maybe something is a little bit weirdly placed, but my one of my my mantras would be, if it works for the camera, it works. And the other one is the faster, the better. So it can, if I can just try to do something the way it looks good and it's faster, I would prefer to, to do it because at the end, time is money and especially producer will thank you a lot. Well, they, they will never thank you because they don't know that you're doing for them. Um, but you will know. And you will sleep better. Okay, so that's, that will be like a closer to camera cloud. That will... Uh, I'm doing something? No. That was, oh, sorry. Yeah, something like that would work. We'll go here, out. And our main plane, that is the red one, because red is the like more eye-popping color, will be re reveal. Yeah, something like this. Uh, I don't want to extend. Well, I have to, I have to admit that I proposed a talk, and when I had the talk prepared, they called, they said well, you could do a 15-minute workshop. So I had to fill 30 more minutes. <laughs> so I, I will do my best to. So yeah, Ooh. the red one is the cool one. So it's. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad this is amazing for you, <laughs> and you clap for it because. <laughs> uh, uh, so th that's it. It, it. It's it's really simple, and and that adds a lot of value to what you're doing, and and it's really simple to, to to do. And for me, one of the of the main things about storyboarding is the narrative. And the narrative, if, if you are the best storyboard artist out there, you will know the timing and you will know the framing and you will know how it's going to be edited by another person. But if you're not, if you gave them timing and you gave them framing and you gave, me, gave them the camera movement, even if they don't use that, that's super helpful for them. Um, and in my experience, this works really well for 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 working like this so we have a 2d uh, image and now we are going almost to 3d so one thing that you can do is to grab something really cheap really um, blocky and establish how the camera is going to move and to add 
over everything a 2D character that is not set on um, on your camera. It's set on the real world. So you can just animate a character. It's really lightly animated. But you have that camera movement and you have that character sitting with the wind. That is something that you can do with almost no effort. Because for example, in this, in this example, um, what I used uh, for this was the sculpt tool. And yeah, if you didn't know that, you can sculpt a 2D drawing. And that's super, super cool because it's really easy. It's just like going to sculpt mode. And you can see here there are like the repetitions. And it's just like grabbing her hair a little bit, moving a little bit. You can do lots of stuff with this. You can, instead of drawing a bounce of a character, you just draw the pose and then you sculpt it a little bit and you move it to have that bounce and to add all that um, small things that for you is no time because it's just like grabbing the sculpt tool and move it better than this, but it's just like, moving it a little bit and that's it. it, it if it's on the right keyframe, um, it will work better. So you can add like small movement to the clothes. Sorry. I think looping animations work super well because at the end everything's moving and it's no much effort to do, to do them. So you just move a little bit, move a little bit, and then just copy the first frame, place it. Now we have a little bit more movement. If I would be more careful, the face would, wouldn't change and so, but I don't know what I'm rushing because I have 50 minutes to fill, but I guess it's, it's in, in Spanish we said uh, deformación profesional, that I, I don't know how to translate that in English, but basically your pipeline is deformed because you are doing this all the time. Um, so that's it. That, that's basically how you can sculpt something and, and to add that little movement to the character, that little uh, things. And with that, you can extend to the maximum because that's the good thing about Blender is that all the possibilities that you can do with 3D stuff, you can do it with 2D stuff because at the end, everything is merged and everything comes from the same place. And that's one of the things. So another example would be like this. So to have the character moving according to the camera. And here I did something that is barely not noticeable, but the leg is not even placed with the rest of the body. It just works for the camera. It's in front of the body, so it has that depth and it's placed in a position that more or less you have a little bit of parallax and, and um, volume. Uh, but as I, as I said, and I think it comes from my animation background. If it works for the camera, it works. And for me, as a storyboard artist, you have to make things work for the camera. And if you have been on the first talk uh, this morning about uh, layout and storyboarding, it was the same. He cheated a lot. He moved the characters. He put it like floating and nobody cares. Nobody's going to move the camera and see all your tricks. So do as much tricks as you can to, to get the right thing you want to, to take. Okay, so we have a 2D flat image, a 2D depth image, a 3D environment, um, 
uh, with with uh, to the character, uh, but is is still. So we can go further than that, and we can make a two D character moving inside of a three D element with a camera that is already moving. <laughs> So this is as simple as to create a stroke, to create a drawing, put that drawing inside of the plane, and parent that drawing inside of the plane. So everything that you do to the plane will affect the, the 2D drawing. But instead of, of having just the plane or having just a, a, a 3D puppet of how the character or how, where the, the character should be, I have a 2D drawing that will resemble the final uh, art of the game of the of the short movie. I can frame it better. I can know how much I want to get close to it. This solves a lot of problems beforehand, and and in the solving problems in the storyboard phase, is it's a really good thing because then the rest of the pipeline um, will notice that you have. You have solved or you have had more problems, but you have put like the questions in the right place so they can be solved during the rest of the pipeline. But as I said, this is for me it's, it's like super obvious that you can do this, but when you show it to special producers, um, they freak out and it's like, oh wow, did you do all the drawings? Yeah. I could do that, but I, I'm not going to do it. I just put it to the image <laughs> and make it work. Um, also for this uh, case in, in particular, uh, as my short is a 2D and 3D mixed um, uh, short movie, I can plan the animation of the plane um, according to the point of view of the camera. So what I mean by that is I know that I will see her flat. I know I, I will see her like this, but kind of works. And if I, for some instance, I would plan it differently and I would Put a short. Sorry. Something like. Uh, ouch. Something like this. I know my story was not working because I will solve this problem with the same technique for the 2D animation, and I know my character is going to be like super dimensional uh, and it's not going to work so with this I'm also solving the problem how to do the 2d animation on that same sh shot and as I said times money yeah um, and if you start solving this stuff you can prepare the rest of the pipeline um, according to that cool so we are getting more or less to a sweet spot. Uh, okay, so more obvious things for me that you can do in storyboarding is like set dressing and cheating your drawing skills. Because lots of times um, something that, for example, in the last project that I did, um, we had like super wide angles and all the character animation was 2D and all the 3D environments, all the environments were 3D. So how you match a 2D character that is made by someone that is not inside that environment and 
you say, okay, we have a super wide lens here, draw a character that it has his hand real close to the camera, but his feet is really far away, and you have to do that in 2D, and then the camera will move. And they say, okay, um, would you pay me like a lot for doing this? Um, and this kind of stuff is really helpful. You can, this is like a, um, a mannequin that I bought in on um, Gumroad that you can pose it, you can change the size of the, of the arms, of the chest, of the head. You can do lots of stuff with, the, with this and then you place it, you just change the pose and then you draw over. And that helps a lot because you are not just, for example, if the production would be like mixed 2D and 3D, like mine, um, I can have like a 3D environment with a 3D character that would work for the camera. And I just bring that puppet to the 2D animator or the 2D uh, storyboard artist and they can draw over and you will have the perfect match on style uh, with a perfect match of your layout and the both both of those of the two roads the 2d and the three road are merged are, are working in parallel but they 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 are working so this is more or less um, everything that you can or at least everything that I have done in 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 my work with different examples. Um, one of the things that that I didn't mention before, um, I have worked for for several uh, AAA video games uh, as a storyboard artist, and in one of them, uh, they wanted to do something like in Half Life, that is a really first person shooter narrative style that you you don't have cinematics. It's just like you go there and then a character comes in and the character talks to you, but you are free. You, you can, the guy is talking to you and you go away. And you can do that as a player. So they didn't know how to do that in a way that all the back of the pipeline will understand what is going to happen in the game. So I just say, I can do like a version of it. I can do like a, a, um, a shooter on rails that you just go here, you talk to someone, you go there, you push the, some buttons and then you go somewhere. And I think that that's the, the moment when storyboarding meets animation meets layout and animatic and what I call story rendering now. So, but that was super helpful because everybody knew at that moment what I was talking about in the way of, or in, in, in the narrative, it's because I, I was talking about, okay, if you have, as it's a, a first person shooter, uh, if you go to somewhere and you have to talk to one, one guy, I want you as a player to look there. And I don't want anything that is going to happen surrounding him to attract the attention and to make the player look to, to other players. So my plan was to set everything in 3D to just say, look here, look here, I'm going to talk to you and, and drive everything to, to that place. So unfortunately, I cannot show anything of that job, but I think Blender in that, in that uh, moment gave me all the tools I needed to really quickly in iterate and quickly show to the um, people in charge that they are not used to storyboarding because they are, they are video game um, developers and artists and so um, that was new to them and it was a really big company that, that have done lots of stuff uh, but that was new to them we can see months before what is going to look like that cinematic moment of the character moving and, and, and doing stuff and we can make decisions on how that is going to work. And then um, uh, they did a prototype and they, they what it's called uh, uh, gray boxing that they just put like gray boxes everywhere and and they they just so make everything playable. Okay, so we are getting more or less, so as I said, this is more or less 
everything that I have used in the in this years uh, working as a storyboard artist with Blender. But now comes a little bit what's beyond that. And uh, if I'm not wrong, do, 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 do. oh, yeah. OK, so everything that you can do and everything that I have done, it was like still images, or not still, it's, um, separate shots. So as the main core of the company want to have like the, the, mm, the ownership of the editing, and especially when uh, we are talking about video games and so, um, it's more difficult to, to have an edit of, of everything. Um, I just like did the shots and sent them and somewhere else someone would edit. But in the last project I did, I started using the story pencil. And the story pencil is that this. So I'm going to show you a, a quick stuff that I did, especially for this. Um, maybe you wouldn't. Like, uh, I will show you, and then I will talk. Well, the music's left, <laughs> the music's missing, but I hope you would recognize that from Raiders of the Last Ark. Uh, so I, I just tried to, to copy, for me, one of the best car chases scenes in the whole cinema story. And I'm trying to do as fast as I can with um, just 2D stuff to to prove a little bit how fast I can do this, how fast I can iterate it, how fast I can show something that have movement, have some rhythm, have some action, some actions happening. Um, and I try to, to keep myself um, a little bit restricted to just do 2D uh, because I wanted to show you like this and then add OK, imagine that you can do everything that I have showed you before here. So you can put like 3D trucks. You can do like uh, 3D environments. You can do whatever you think it's needed to have in no time something that looks like an animatic that starts to give you some feelings, that, that starts to give you um, that sense of narrative. And on top of that, um, this is a, a, a tool that, that you can just download it and, and, and put it there. Um, apart from that, for storyboarding, um, you probably will know the studio El Giri from Spain, that they have done uh, Sith uh, from Star Wars Visions. They have developed a tool to help everything that uh, feels that uh, Starting with Blender is like putting to you into a, a space rocket, and everything is full of buttons and and um, hard to to manage. They have developed the story tools that you have a talk today at three o'clock, I think, about develop the development of this, and basically, what it adds is that. Well, some some menus and some layers um, on top of everything that allow you to do storyboards in a more artist-friendly uh, way. If you are not used to to work with Blender, you can move around, you can scale things up, uh, you can zoom, you can grab, you can record, you can keyframe. 
uh, it's a it's a really useful tool if you are not super into Blender and it's the first time you open it and as I said, it's like sitting on a 1980 rocket to the moon that everything is full of buttons and options. This will give you a little bit of focus and a little bit of, of easy entrance or not so hard entrance into, into the storyboard uh, in Blender. Uh, and this is where, where we, we hit the present. This is what Blender is right now. Probably there, there are two or more things that I missed out, but this is what you can do now with Blender. This is what, what you can do now with Storyboard, um, Story Pencil, and, and so. And then we get into the future. And now we're using a tablet to, to do this. And where we're going, we don't need a tablet. So the future of story, story rendering. Um, I come from Spain. In Spain, there's a, a project called Next Lab. Uh, and they, they do really crazy stuff. When I heard, first heard of them, um, they sell the idea to create stuff in Quill. That is a VR drawing tool and then put them in um, Unreal Engine. And I did that, I did that, that project. I was one of the winners and I learned a lot. And I, I think the, the thing that I learned more is what we are heading to. And for me, I used the project of the Spitfire to, to do it. And for me, it was a really quick way to prototype. I did a storyboard and an animatic, I think it was in like three hours. I had to do a short movie, um, a short clip. It was around one minute and so, around 25 shots uh, to complete the, the project. And my goal on this was to quit, kick, uh, quick prototype everything as much as possible because I had all the tools to then make things work in a narrative way. Because for me, the, the narrative of it was the most important thing. And I did a really, 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 really sketchy and really fast um, prototype. And that led me to have everything solved be beforehand. And then I can uh, work a little bit more on the final look and then make it look a little bit prettier, um, even with the restrictions of, of Quill. And here is the result. So you can see both of them on the left side is the quick prototype. And on the right side is the final short that I did when everything was already uh, was more mm, appealed to the eye. Everything was better sold with uh, Unreal Engine cameras, Unreal Engine lightning. Uh, but that gave me a, a, a vision of, of what storyboarding would be in the future. It would be more than drawing, having the ability to grab stuff, to move stuff, to, to not having to draw uh, um, something like a, a, a glass and, and then move the glass and draw again and move the glass and draw again. It would be like making a quick sketch of the in 3D of the of the glass and then grab it and put it somewhere else. And in this case, you probably would know this guy. Danny Lara is one of the uh, fathers of Grease Pencil and he's working on Grease Pencil VR. And his philosophy and that was I was referring a little bit on the at the beginning of the talk what I have to pick the the mouse um, is that you will end up with a bunch of tools that it would be a mouse a pen and some VR um, controllers to do everything and you will use them in all the in in the best um, scenario possible so you will give 
everything out of the box of, of Blender. So for me, that's the future. For me, everything that, that we can make to, to push this project, um, uh, f to, to make it a, um, a reality, it's, it's really important for, me, for, I think, for the community. And, and this will give all the storyboard artists and all the animators. Uh, one of my friends is, is Danny Pesha, that is a, a Disney animator. And he said, I animate like five times faster with a VR set uh, than with the mouse and a, a pen. Because you have to try to grab stuff and move it to, to realize that that's the easiest way to do it. So that's it. My talk ends here. But as I'm the X-Wing guy, I wanted to show you all my stuff because I like to see them in a big screen with <laughs> good audio. So I'm going to finish with that. Yeah, I don't want nobody to say that I didn't try it. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you so much for, for having me here, giving this talk. Thank you so much for attending, having all those amazing talks. At the same time, uh, if you want to know more about me, uh, you can find me on social media as Renato3XL. And that's it. Thank you so much.